Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video I wanted to answer a question from one of the Patreon supporters whose name is Sonia. And Sonia was asking me to um, kind of explain to her what exactly is happening with the night skies that we have here on our planet compared to let's say if we were in a different um, galaxy or if we were in an entirely different part of the galaxy. Specifically what Sonia was wondering about are two things. One is, where exactly are we located in relation to other galaxies and also in relation to the rest of the universe? And also, if our galactic cluster is not very highly populated, does that mean that our night skies are actually much darker than other areas or other um, locations in the universe? And to start, I wanted to actually explain to you, so where exactly are we located? So right now we are somewhere in the Milky Way galaxy and um, what we need to do, first of all, is, well, we need to take a look at where our planet Earth is located in relation to other stars right here in the Milky Way. Now, um, first of all, as you can probably tell just from the shape of the Milky Way, this area in the middle is the brightest. This is where the night skies would be pretty bright, whereas anywhere on the outskirts here, you would have some stars, but it wouldn't really be as bright. Now, our uh, star, our solar system, the Sun, is located sort of in the middle, away from the center, right here-ish. So, if you were to try to locate it in Space Engine, it would be somewhere maybe right here or so. And this is essentially around 25 to 27,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. Now, once again, this is not the area where you would actually expect a lot of light simply because there are not as many stars as there are in the middle. And so that's kind of where we locate it in galactic terms. But if we were to um, look outside of our galaxy and try to find the nearby galaxies near us, this is the so-called local group. The local group uh, contains at least 54 galaxies, although we've been finding new ones pretty much regularly now. And for the most part, it's because some of them are really, really hard to see. They're very, very dim. And here, um, this is maybe not even the best representation of this, but in this image here, you can kind of see what's happening. So we actually have two major components to the so-called local group. There's the Milky Way with its several um, satellite galaxies that are much smaller, and this is including things like the really famous galaxies, a large Magellanic Cloud and small Magellanic Cloud. These are probably some of the more famous galaxies in the night skies and a lot of other smaller galaxies, some of which were only discovered not so long ago, only a few years ago. And then we have the other part, which is the Andromeda galaxy and its partner Triangulum galaxy. These two are also very large, but they form this other area, this other region, that has a few other components and a few other um, satellites. And so altogether, this local group forms approximately 54, at least as of now, galaxies. Um, and this whole area is around 10 million light years across. Now, in terms of the actual population um, numbers or in terms of the actual, I guess, density of galaxies, this is kind of average that you expect most local groups to have around the same number. But then if we decide to zoom out of here and go and take a look at the larger um, object or the larger grouping of galaxies, this is where we started discovering things a little bit differently or objects that are slightly different from our regular understanding of space. So um, the thing about galaxies is that despite the distances involved here and also despite the fact that uh, there are so many of them, they're still kind of gravitationally connected to each other. As a matter of fact, the uh, Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way are moving toward each other at a speed of about 120 kilometers per second. At the same time, if we keep zooming out, we'll eventually find ourselves looking at this, and this is known as the Virgo Supercluster. It's kind of like the um, arbitrary name we gave to this um, location, because a lot of the galaxies here are still connected, but this time they're connected as groups, so the groups are moving together, but in different directions. Some of the groups here are actually relatively far away from each other, but they do come in chunks. As a matter of fact, as you can see here, the Virgo Cluster has a lot more galaxies than our own does. And uh, for the most part, the way we would define this supercluster is as a collection of local groups. So not just individual galaxies, but local groups moving together. And we think that if you were to count every single supercluster out there, you would find about 10 million of these in the universe. So there's a lot of this stuff. 
In terms of the actual size, this is approximately 110 million light years across, which is already pretty large. So this is a really, really, really big area, or I guess you can call it volume. And for the longest time, we actually thought that uh, this was sort of like one of the biggest structures uh, nearby and the biggest um, connected structures. But then a few years ago, specifically in 2014, we discovered that you can kind of zoom out a little bit more and discover what's known as Laniakea supercluster. Now, our Virgo supercluster is right here, and the other superclusters are actually kind of roughly connected to it, forming this shape that you see right here. And a few years ago, you may have seen this image going around, specifically from various science magazines, which was, um, well, really kind of trying to explain what like Laniakea was. And this image is very, very misleading. This is actually kind of why I don't really like to use this. What this shows us is the Laniakea supercluster with the motions of those galaxies and galactic clusters. But unfortunately, this is really not what all of this looks like in real life, because it really looks like this. This is a much more accurate representation with all of these superclusters connected together and kind of moving together. But the main difference between the Laniakea supercluster and the Virgo supercluster is how they're defined or around what point they're sort of centered. The Virgo supercluster doesn't really have a definitive point, and uh, in Virgo superclusters, the local groups are all moving together. But in this supercluster, the Laniakea, which is essentially the biggest structure we've discovered um, in the uh, nearby region, um, everything here is sort of organized around the mysterious area known as the Great Attractor. Now, one day I'll make a video about this explaining what we think it is, but in uh, rough terms, it's an unusual area, it's an unusual gravitational pull that seems to be attracting stuff, and we're all kind of moving toward it. And this is kind of how K is defined, as all of these uh, clusters, superclusters, moving toward this unusual attractor. But the actual map itself looks kind of like this, and you can see that the local group is right here, and our own galaxy, and of course our planet Earth, is somewhere inside of this. But here on this picture, there are 100,000 different galaxies. So finding our own galaxy is going to be pretty challenging. And of course, in terms of size, this is also pretty big. It's approximately 500 million light years across. So about five times as big as the Virgo supercluster. But before I continue, I wanted to also add that a very recent study discovered that although we initially assumed that this was a, a relatively stable structure, the recent analysis suggested that Laniakea is stable for now, but in the next few billion years, there's a very high chance that because of the Great Attractor and because of the other interaction of galaxies, some of the clusters will actually separate and go on their merry ways, um, so Laniakea is not as stable as we initially thought. But that's another story for another day. For now, all you need to know is that this right here is the biggest structure we have um, that forms a kind of a large group of um, galaxies of which our own galaxy is part of and is connected to everything else gravitationally. And lastly, if we were to zoom out even more, like a lot more, the Laniakea is somewhere in there. It's really hard to see it at this point because we haven't really studied the uh, regions past that very well. The things here get so big and um, the distances involved are so difficult to analyze that past Laniakea, we're not entirely sure what's happening. But we know that there are some other structures that are even bigger than this. So in that sense, um, every little white spot you see here is actually um, a galactic supercluster and there's a lot of them. But where exactly are we in relation to all of this in the universe? Well, if you watched uh, enough video on this channel, you know that we are right in the middle. Now, you know, how is that possible? If our planet Earth and our solar system is not in the middle of our own galaxy, why is it that our own supercluster is in the middle? Well, it has to do with the expansion of the universe and the fact that we can only see the observable universe in a kind of a sphere around us. In other words, this blue sphere that you see, this is the stuff that we can actually observe and measure and um, scientifically prove that is out there. This is the observable universe and it expands into every direction from us at equal pace. However, there's definitely other parts of the universe that are not observable to us and we'll never be able to see them because they're past the visible horizon. So, in that sense, we can't really specifically say where we're located, but in relation to the observable universe, we're right in the middle. And so, okay, that's kind of where we are. 
Now, what about the night skies? Where would you see the slightly brighter or slightly darker night skies? Well, it's not as much to do with the actual galactic formations or the actual clusters. In other words, if I were to move through the universe, um, for the most part, the gal galaxies themselves don't change the night skies as much as the stars. And some of the brighter um, night skies would be inside globular clusters. So they wouldn't really depend as much on the number of galaxies that you see in the night skies, but on a number of very bright nearby stars, such as, for example, in one of the nearby globular clusters not so far away from our own planet Earth. Let's go and find one. So there is a globular cluster known as NGC 6528, and if we were to go right in the middle of it and discover some kind of a star system somewhere in the center with um, potentially a planet or two to stand on, this would probably be one of the brightest night sky views that you could um, find anywhere else in the universe. So in that sense, it doesn't really matter if you're standing on the surface of a planet um, far away in the universe or if you're right here in the Milky Way. The brightest night skies that we're about to see are going to be most likely in the center of the galaxy in the global clusters there. That's where you'll see some of the most incredible views with a lot, a lot of bright objects. Some of them absolutely spectacular and definitely a lot brighter than anything we see here on planet Earth. All of this is, of course, based on our current understanding of the universe. But for all we know, we might one day discover something out there that is actually brighter than anything else we have in the Milky Way. For now, though, that's all we know, and hopefully this answers your question, Sonia. Thank you for your support on Patreon, and thank you for asking this pretty cool question. It definitely was something worth exploring, worth learning, and worth explaining. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who loves to learn about space and universe. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.